The um, fact-checking site, PolitiFact, has done a fact-check on me, um, fact-checking a statement that I made on Fox News on the Ingram angle. And um, the kind of back and forth between me and the PolitiFact writer, this is a guy um, named Bill McCarthy, is very revealing because it takes you into the twilight zone of the fact-checking world. Now, I should say, I kind of give away the result, PolitiFact rates my statement false. So let's go through the statement to see what in it is false. Here's what I said, and I'm going to actually read the quote. It's fairly short. This is what PolitiFact set out to fact check. I said this, if you follow January 6th at the granular level with the facts that are coming out slowly, they're coming out because the government has been very reluctant to release footage, particularly footage of what happened in the tunnel on January 6th, where you now begin to see these cops using massive amounts of force against unarmed Trump supporters, including women. The death of Roseanne Boyland is now being called into question, where she the second Trump supporter killed by the authorities, end quote. That's the statement. It might seem pretty innocuous. It alludes to two specific facts. One, the fact that the government has been reluctant, and in fact, to this date, has not released the full footage of January 6th and has certainly not released the full footage of what happened in the tunnel. And two, that cops used force, massive amounts of force, to quote myself, against, quote, unarmed Trump supporters, including women. Now, what's really interesting is how they set about trying to refute this, because these statements are both true. Of course, I conclude the quote with just a question about Roseanne Boyland. Obviously, a question is not a fact. It's asking, in fact, for the production of facts. So McCarthy writes me, and he basically says, listen, can you support the statement that you made? And so I say, sure, I can. And I send him a whole bunch of videos. There's some video that has been released from the tunnel, and it actually shows cops using force against unarmed Trump supporters. So he replies back and goes, in effect, he says, don't you know that there were some people in the tunnel who were armed? And, and, and I reply this. I'm not quoting myself again in my email to McCarthy. I go, quote, you're misstating what I said. I never said no one in the entire crowd on January 6th was armed. If you read my quotation, it applies to violence in the tunnel. And I specifically reference Roseanne Boyland, who was unarmed. And then I say, please don't use the deceptive practice of creating a straw man. No one was armed, attributing it to me and then refuting not what I said, but what you mischaracterize me as saying. Now, McCarthy comes back in an email to me and he says, quote, court documents and video footage show evidence of violence and weapons among the rioters, including in the tunnel. Now, think about this for a minute, because notice that he's not refuting anything that I said. I say the police are using violence against unarmed Trump supporters. He's coming back and saying, well, there were other guys who were armed. So I tell him this. This is what I say. I'm quoting now, quote, if I say the Capitol Police used force against unarmed protesters like Boyland, this is not refuted or disproved by showing that other protesters were armed. And I, and because I'm assuming I'm dealing with a moron, I say, this is a well-known logical fallacy. And then I explain the fallacy to him in, in kind of excruciating detail. I say, look, police officer A attacks unarmed protester B, but protester C had weapons. And I say, look, the second clause that protester C had weapons doesn't refute the first one. It could still be true. In fact, it is true that the police did in fact attack unarmed protesters. So, you know, I don't know if McCarthy got the point. What I do know is I said, listen, if you want more proof uh, that the police attacked unarmed people, contact attorney Joseph McBride. By the way, I'm going to have McBride on the podcast tomorrow. I said he has all kinds of court filings pointing out that his client, other clients, multiple eyewitnesses saw the police attack unarmed protesters. And so there's plenty of corroboration for what I said. You can disagree with what I said, but that's not the same thing as claiming that it's false. So to his credit, McCarthy contacts Joseph McBride. Joseph McBride sends him a lengthy e email documenting this, pointing out that his own client, a woman named Victoria White, endured, quote, an absolutely brutal beating at the hands of the D.C. police. So you think between Roseanne Boylan and Victoria White, my case has actually clinched. But he goes on to point out another defendant, Michael Joseph Foy. And then McBride makes kind of a subtle point. Uh, he says, listen, all these men who are accused of 
even fighting back in the tunnel, the violence in the tunnel. He goes, these are pro-police guys. These are pro-military guys. A bunch of them are veterans. Why are they going to attack the police? There's only one conceivable reason, and that is the police are attacking unarmed protesters, and these guys rush to the defense of those unarmed people being attacked. So all of this is pointed out to PolitiFact. But what does PolitiFact do? If you actually read the PolitiFact fact check, they ignore all of this. They, they set up exactly what I said they would do. They set up a straw man. And the straw man is they basically pretend like I'm saying no one was armed. Um, and so they then begin to set about to fact check, not what I said, but their own caricature, their own replacement of what I said. So they set up the straw man. They didn't knock down the straw man by saying, well, there's clear evidence that some people in the tunnel were armed. Uh, ignoring what I said and then proclaiming it on this, you know, idiotic so-called truth-o-meter, uh, you know, false, false. So this is just laughable nonsense. Now, obviously, the real goal of PolitiFact here is to try to get me kicked off social media. But of course, I'm way too smart for them because the moment I realized that they were fact-checking me on this, I pulled the clip down off of Facebook. I pulled the clip down off of YouTube. So guess what? They can't ban me because there's no clip. So, so PolitiFact's so-called fact-check ends up going off not with a bang but with a whimper, poof, because there's nothing to ban me over. But these people are frauds. Their fact-checks are frauds. Bill McCarthy's a fraud. And I think I've given enough facts here to, um, to um, make my point that we're dealing here not with politifact, but politifiction.